Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm Jennifer Solis. To my right is Kurt Dukach. Uh, we have Perry Haichu. Lawrence on the board. He always makes me sound good. And... Beach. He's our producer. Today in studio, we have um, the the producer and the editor of Elevate Magazine, uh, Beth Schwartz. She is the producer, and Guy Bertuzzi. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Beth Schwartz. She's the editor of Elevate Magazine, and Guy Bertuzzi. He is the publisher, publisher yeah. of the magazine. All right, Elevate Magazine. That doesn't sound cannabis related. <laughs> well, we decided with Elevate, we wanted to do something out of the norm. There's over 40, 50 publications across the country that are catering to the market, but not catering to the medicinal market. With Elevate, we love the synonym of bringing a spiritual higher, just bringing it up above and beyond. Um, kind of started with my mom. so. Yeah. So how how did how did that uh, formulate? Well, about two and a half years ago, my mom was in remission from lung cancer, and it came back with a vengeance. Um, so when she came to me and she told me that she did not want to go through radiation or chemo, and I sent to her, I was like, why why wouldn't you want to live longer? I have a five year old and an eight year old at home. I have two other brothers that have their mom that's still alive and they're in their 50s. I'm like, I'm not ready to lose my mom. Okay. She's like, I can't sleep. I can't eat. I have to sit up in a recliner. It's not worth the pain. I go, well, I have the perfect solution for you. I was like, there's something that are edibles on the market that I could be able to get you and it'll help reduce the nausea. It's going to help you sleep at night in your bed. It's going to make you comfortable. And then she's like, no, that's dope. To her growing up, my mom was 74 when she passed. Everything okay. was dope. Heroin was the same thing as cocaine. Everything was one drug. It didn't have the separation. And when I tried educating her on the differences of it, she refused to change her mind. So with that being said, about two months later, she passed. And it kind of became my mission of wanting to educate the public that these are healthier alternatives instead of pain pills, instead of okay. taking these drugs. And that was where Elevate came was that we want to be a higher spiritual being with the medicinal, that we want to do it as a community, bring it together and educate the masses on the benefits of medicinal marijuana. So basically it was just, it was about uh, removing the stigma of, of, the, of the thought that it was all dope. Um, you know, young kids say dope and that means actually good, right, Perry? Dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on uh, which reference you use it in. I mean, dope can be used in a nice way, or it could be used to reference like you know, meth is what I call dope. So it's you know, dope is definitely bad to me. But uh, I kind of feel with your uh, your story touched a nerve to me too. My grandmother went through a very similar thing. She also had uh, she had breast cancer, which went into remission and came back, and ended up taking her life a few years ago. And she, we also desperately tried to get her on medical cannabis, and eventually we got a doctor to prescribe her Marinol, which. You know, as some of us know, it doesn't have the same effect, but we did see a few minor uh, helpful effects of the of the medicine. But definitely, my family uh, history also has an effect on my advocacy. So I feel for you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it seems like it's touched everybody, and it's such a better alternative for especially cancer treatment. And I mean, you shouldn't chemo. It's could be we're so far behind. Yes, yes, we are. Um, and so, when are you going to launch your magazine? Um, I'll let actually Beth take over on the, our editor in chief, Beth Schwartz. Uh, we, I'll let her take over on that one. We're actually launching on April 20th. Right on. Wonderful. It's going to be our April, May issue. Okay. Yeah, we're very excited. Okay. And, um, um, what size is your magazine? How big is it? How? Uh, we are 
exact specs, 8.25 by 11.875 or 8.7, by 11.875. It's going to be regular magazine size. Okay. uh, Glossy cover. Okay. We're doing glossy text on the inside as well. Uh, We're going to launch with 36 pages and a four page cover wrap. Right on, right on. And say so you're launching on April 20th at our 420 Freedom Fest. Guys. Yes, and thank you guys for allowing us to be a part of it. We were very honored to be able to have a booth and actually give it a sneak peek the night before. We're proud to be able to host you guys, and thank you so much for bringing your professionalism to the medical marijuana community. We look forward to having you guys, you know, hopefully bring a level of... Uh, of interest and per- like I said, I don't want to use the word professionalism again, but I have to because I can't come up with anything else. I medicated a little bit earlier today. Um, <laughs> I really hope you guys can bring like something more to this community that we're missing. Definitely. Well, one of the greatest. Uh, I was on the phone with one of the uh, executives of Relics uh, Magazine, which is the Deadhead yeah. Magazine, and she gave us one of the comp- best compliments when she looked at her mock-up. She's like, she's like, I love high times, but I won't carry it with me on a subway. Elevate. I would carry with me on a subway. Yeah. You know, and that's what we're trying to go for is reach the masses and educate them and remove that stigma and move the conversation forward. No doubt. No doubt. And that's a really great premise. Um, You also told me that you may be in some of the hotels. Uh, Not in the hotels. We do have distribution uh, along within PBR Rockbart at Planet Hollywood, and we should have distribution also at Rock House in the Venetian. Very cool. And also uh, medical offices. Medical offices, a lot of medical offices. Yes, What's correct. What's the, uh, the end goal here? Do you hope to remain a local magazine? Do you hope to go national or regional first? What's your, what's the next step after you guys blow up Las Vegas? Well, I've been here for 12 years, so my home is where it counts first. Okay. Um, we do want to launch it successfully and move the conversation forward in Nevada, mm-hmm. um, where we're even looking at doing Q&A symposiums once a month uh, to educate the public. Um, but Very then cool. we do have goals of expanding um, Areas that we're looking at are Oregon, Alaska, some underserved communities, but we want to do it right and partner up with those cities and create that forum. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. Sure. Sure. You've got to get the flavor of the of the city to really go into the magazine. And so what is your flavor? What is your, your premise? You know, you're, you it's elevate. You want to take it to a higher level, but... We really want to create a, a forum to educate people. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, like Guy was talking about, so many people don't realize they could treat their illnesses with medicinal cannabis rather than taking toxic pharmaceuticals, you know, that you are only treating where a medicinal cannabis has the, you know, gives the opportunity to possibly cure. And uh, we're just trying to uh, put it out there and take away the stigma and um, inform and help people heal themselves. We're, right. For instance, mm-hmm. like I know a lot of people know about Charlotte's Web. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think that's a fascinating story that that has helped so many children with epilepsy. And uh, so obviously we would want to do a story on Charlotte's Web and talk about how that has helped all those children. And our cover story is actually about a prominent figure in the community who's using uh, medicinal cannabis to treat a uh, terminal illness he has. And I think that's going to be fascinating to people to see how it has stopped that disease he has in its tracks and it's not progressing. And so they're able to, you know, work on his illness without using the toxicity of pharmaceuticals. And I've also heard that he's kind of backed down on uh, the amount of um, pharmaceuticals that he's being taken and just replacing it more with cannabis. Correct. Yeah, the subject's down by 75% of his pharmaceuticals. 75% down from his pharmaceuticals. And it's strictly on cannabinoid oils and I believe edibles as well. And that's, as Beth was saying, we're focusing on human interest pieces. We want to tug at the heart strings and we want to educate them that way. Because everybody knows somebody that's affected by cancer or Parkinson's or even PTSD with vets coming out of the um, military service. Yeah. And we feel that the way to educate the public is to relate to them and give them sometimes high profile, sometimes not high profile human interest pieces and talking about how it's helping them, how they're feeling better or able to walk again. And so that maybe more people can can relate to um, these maybe older folks or sick folks that that are that are treating themselves with cannabis. So it's not it's not like a high times and I, in high times you know there's a, it's a great magazine. It is great Absolutely. magazine. Pioneering. 
pioneering for sure for sure but um as far as human interest stories you know they show more they show more of like cannabis cup and and and, you know competitions and stuff like that unfortunately i believe that high times is i mean there's more advertisements in high times and articles at this point and it's been that way for a significant period of time unfortunately i mean the branding of the product has gotten to be more important to them, I believe, than the journalistic quality of the articles at this point. They they still spend a lot of money on their on their articles and their research. They you do, think do so? they do do some good stuff. Um, you'll see online their stuff, but yeah, like you said, most of the cannabis based magazines are over fifty percent art are, are over fifty percent advertisements, and you'll see people who take out two, three, four page ads in them and stuff and, sure. you know, pitching their new products coming out. Actually, we, we got a, a, a magazine at Champs that was actually one advertisement with like three stories in it. <laughs> and it was like 60 pages long, you know, and, and it was, they had a whole different brands. I can't remember the magazine. No, it was actually about, was about 120 pages long. And it was, it was all, a, every story in there was about this nutrient line. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like how to grow bigger buds and the whole the whole magazine you picked this up and every every article every advertisement was all the same nutrient line and it was just kind of by the time you got through you know the first quarter of it you're like okay i'm done reading this advertisement <laughs> well you know you guys uh kind of hit a key there you're like well, everyone has a story well if everyone has these stories and there are so many great stories like you know um, how would people get a hold of you to like tell their story if they want to just like you know submit something that really they they feel like you guys should uh, need to hear or something like that uh, we welcome that feedback beth would the more and more people that want to share it with to us we would love and yeah we actually have a website it's in beta now but it is set up for, to receive requests and it's elevate nv.com and so if people want to visit that they'll get elevate nv.com for those of you just picking up your pens and it has all of our contact information email addresses and all that to get a hold of us exactly so if you guys want to write and you want to you want a story submit it to these guys about you about your own personal story and you may see your your story in print or even on your um blog right you have a yeah we have our website that's going out uh like beth said we are in beta we're making a lot of changes and adding editorial content and we want to add live social feeds and we do once everything's finalized add a dispensary finder for free of charge okay so it's not where people are just paying a sponsor to find the dispensary we want to offer that service for our readers and our followers um that's a great thing yeah you know everybody there's several websites without mentioning them that want to do it for profit we want to do it to help educate yeah some are fifteen thousand dollars a month (laughs) yeah (laughs) my goodness wow and then they go to jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, All right. Um, we have a caller on the line. Uh, uh, Vicki, do you have a do you have a question for Elevate Magazine? What's going on? Well, on? yes. Um, I, I'm I'm wondering. I live in South Florida. How do we get it? How do we get it to pass? How do we? I mean, we thought it was in the bag at this election, and it wasn't. And you know, my son has muscular dystrophy and osteoarthritis, and you know, he, they have no problem giving him a form of codeine, and they have no problem giving him Celebrex, and, and um, me having to worry about elevated um, levels of um, his liver panel, and also lymphoma now, which is newest one with Enbro, and he's been on like a million different drugs since he's nine years old. He's 20 years old now, and he has no life. He hasn't even graduated high school because he keeps dropping classes, but yet... They're, the best that they're talking about, they're supposed to go to the house yesterday, and then they talked about it today. They're talking about a, a small THC level, but really, like you were talking about, it's really only for Charlotte's Web, and the ones that are included that will get, um, if it is passed, my son's type of muscular dystrophy is not included. They include ALS, which is, um, you know, um, Lou Gehrig's disease, but that doesn't include his type of muscular dystrophy or pain. You and see, I just think it's with, so inhumane. It should just be between the doctors basis. and it should just be between the doctor and the patient, nobody else. And I just don't understand mm-hmm. what to do about it. Short well, of, I, I can. I can kind of help you on what to do about it. If it's going through the assembly in the house um, in Florida, you need to get everybody that you can on the phone to their representatives to say to get this bill through 
the the assembly and get it through, uh, you know, well, judiciary. Also, you know, we struggle with this problem here in Las Vegas about legislative language. What language gets in? What language doesn't? Which qualifying conditions are are included? Which ones are not? And really, well, this has problem, to do with though. this has to do with this has to do with sometimes lobbyists and sometimes this has yeah. to do with the lack of education. People just aren't aware that these qualifying conditions can be served or just might not have been included because maybe said special interest group representing said uh, said illness didn't come to that legislator and say, look, we want this included, this language included in the bill. If you want that language included in the bill, if you have a state assembly or state senate representative who might be a co-sponsor of that bill, you need to tell you, look, we, we want this language attached to this bill immediately. If there are any uh, local advocacy organizations like a chapter of normal or ASA or there hopefully are. someday a weekend chapter in the future, yes. you know, definitely, yes, definitely and approach them and say, look, you know, we would love these qualifying conditions added to this bill language if possible. And we're willing to testify in front of these hearings to make our yes. voices heard if we need it done. Hell, you know, I'll bring my son down there. You can well, tell him. Well, not, not just that. I, I've taken it to the point where I took a job with an airline so I could travel up to the capital. So I have access for travel, but it's not even just that it's the fact that the low THC levels and without using the whole plant you're not getting some of the same properties even if they were to include my son in the language and that's a problem because the low THC is fine if you have epilepsy and it's great for seizures for the Charlotte's Web. But what about those who need other properties such as for chronic pain? Even Dr. Oz is now professing that it's that it's a good thing to help with chronic pain. Oh and absolutely I just Absolutely. I just don't understand why they're okay with giving my son a form of codeine or heroin, which is really what what it is. Because it's become socially acceptable. Society has trained us to believe that these things are good and marijuana is bad, and we have to work to re-educate these people on a daily basis. We've been uh, we've been brainwashed for decades to well, think you, that this well, is a bad you, thing. So thing you know what? Like you should say. get a hold of Drug Policy Alliance. Yeah, I was down there meeting okay. with Ethan Nadelman. Um, they were actually, we were discussing Wasserman Schultz and her stopping with the vote going that you guys, I believe, got 58%. But uh, it took she's 60. totally against it. She is. And she had breast cancer, actually. And she's like right in, because I'm in South Florida. She's only, she's only 10 minutes from us. And she actually helped rock the vote negatively so that it did not pass. And that's... In, what the Drug Policy Alliance was down there trying to counter, they actually had she was a, a nightmare. Yeah, she seems and to be. She's in, she's in my district, okay, so she's a nightmare. All I'm going to say is that I really have a problem with this because she herself had breast cancer and she should be understanding. Yeah, and yeah, she you voted would think for so. it in D.C., she... if I'm correctly. She actually yeah. voted for it in D.C. as well. But... Uh, what Was it like one of these not-in-my-neighborhood kind of things? Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's why Ethan you know was what, down no. there. You know no? what she did? No. You know what was most upsetting was the fact that three days before the election, somebody put out there that there's that we wanted it for recreation. Whether or not we did is not the point. The point mm. is that it was meant for medical usage and it had made many strides in fact uh, representative katie edwards in district 98 and fort lauderdale made national attention for promoting charlotte's web and having people testify in tallahassee before before um, the house and you know they saw the the benefit of it what i have a problem with is the fact that it's so myopic and let me just say the constitution was written on him okay oh yeah it's still standing yeah. you know if we because of yellow journalism, that's why we have cotton now. It's not because it's not because it wasn't successful. From 1850 until 1937, it was a successful drug for many people. Oh, absolutely! You're preaching to the choir. We've used all these uh, all of these arguments, but you know, we have we'll bring you back in just a minute. We have to go to our first commercial break. With our, uh, you know, someone's got to pay the bills. We got sponsors, so we have to let you go just for a second. But hang tough with us, and we'll come right back to you. Okay, we'll Vicky. Sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. 
We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at weekend702.org. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Okay, we're returning from a uh, from a break with um, Beth Schwartz and Guy Bertuzzi of Elevate Magazine, and we have Vicky on the line that we were talking to you. Vicky, I have a question. Yes, a sure. very important question. Okay, what do I do? I have to be a Nevada resident to get a medical card, or to get one for my son? He's twenty. He has to be a Nevada resident to get a medical card in Nevada. But Nevada can I? Oh, Nevada, okay. Nevada Can also I have a second a... driver's license then? Am I allowed to be a resident in Nevada as well, a dual without giving up my driver's license? You can Florida? have an ID card if you live in Nevada. Yes, you can get an identification card, and that is, uh, I believe, that's sufficient to get your to yeah, get your medical just... marijuana permit. And also, Nevada also has a reciprocity clause. So if you happen to get your medical marijuana permit in any other state and travel to Nevada you are protected under our laws here. So if they if they pass this kind of bogus law that doesn't allow THC and you need to get your son medication and you are working for the airline, I don't know, yes, come, out, come out here and get an apartment or something like that. You know what? A lot of people have been taking the drastic step of moving to a different state if their state does not help them with medical cannabis. Medical refugees. We They're called them, medical yeah, refugees. A lot of them. There's well, my whole... sister is a resident of Nevada. She lives well, in Las Vegas Then proper. maybe... Then maybe your son could come and live here with your sister for a while and, well, and get the medicine or, he needs until Florida gets their head out of their keister. Or take a field trip to Nevada. <laughs> yes. I, I've thought of that. And let me ask you a question, though. What are the sure. rules? I understand the reciprocity bill. What are the rules if I was to become a, a resident and well, then I came home to Florida? Is that trafficking if I take it with me or yes, if I have a chip? It is called interstate drug trafficking if you take it across state lines. I'm sorry, but it is a federal offense. And we don't we don't like to mess with the feds. But no, no. Uh, what other options? Because I hear you could order from magazines and stuff. I th ninety ninety nine point nine percent of that stuff being ordered from magazines, they're taking you for a ride. It's bogus. Yeah, it's bogus. That's, that's CBD, and, CBD and honestly, hemp oil. Honestly, if you're which... looking for people on like Craigslist or something like that who are advertising medical marijuana deliveries, I would be really. I have really, never tried pot in I my life. I would be really I sketchy know where about to even Look, get it. Just to acquire, like people do crazy things, like trying to get desperate and acquire their medicine, or try to acquire their medicine for their loved ones in places yes. to where they don't know where they're going and sometimes that opens themselves up to to certain elements who are looking to take advantage of desperate people just like any other industry so that's why we really have worked hard to uh, legitimize the industry here in nevada and other places to make sure that good people who are looking to get good medicine don't get taken advantage of and get charged a fair price for a fair product so you know definitely of course you know we all try to be the change we want to see in the places we live but at some point, if you beat your head against a wall to such a point to where your quality of life and your family's quality of life is uh, affected to that point, I would highly encourage you to at least take a look at relocating. Yeah, come on, come on out. Come on and out and Vicky, stay. I just want to say I commend you. Um, my nephew passed away from muscular dystrophy seven years ago. Um, you. And doing sorry, everything sir. you're doing to help your son is, I wished I knew about medicinal marijuana or medicinal cannabis. 10, 15 years ago, and I didn't understand the education of it. And my nephew went through suffering. So I commend you completely. 
and if you really want to talk to us like let me have lawrence get all your info and uh Please. get a, get a hold yeah. of us after the show and we will talk okay. talk you through everything we can yeah for sure and you i know would what? be grateful good i would luck. be very grateful good luck and uh, and you know thank you for putting up the fight there in florida but if they're not going to help you you know come on out to nevada and and have him live with your sister you know he, he can live with we'll the, he, he can yeah, live see, with his aunt have him come stay out here for a couple months with his aunt and try that uh, become a patient try the medicine see if see if it works which you know if anything it should help alleviate some of the symptoms, symptoms so yeah. Yeah. and if it does then it might be time to consider you know a change in your your habitat well it, it doesn't have the humidity here <laughs> no, 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 I know. Although Las I Vegas is a dry heat. Summer. And you could count <laughs> it, it, how many times it rains on our, to both hands. Yes, and it, and it hardly ever rains, too. Look at, look at it, um, um, no, I, and, I, and I have considered many options, believe me. I just I just feel like I'm at wit's end. I actually, I took a second job with the airline so I could have the travel benefits, and I just... But I intend to... I, I actually, I dated a a cop so I could find out about that's how I found out that it's a trafficking offense and that it's a felony it's not actually a third degree misdemeanor <laughs> well, yeah. so well good luck in all your relationships <laughs> this, is, this is why we're so <laughs> careful but, yeah. um, but Vicki please also reach out to us at elevatenv.com because your story is one we would probably want to share online as well and how hard it is for you to get it absolutely sir I will do that right. thank, thank you Vicki now we into local. News. All right, yeah. Now we into go into some local news. Um, I got a bill out of Carson City. All right, uh, what's up? Well, <laughs> this has been all over everybody's lips lately, so I might as well just get it out there. Uh, our favorite state senator, Senator Sager Bloom, has introduced Senate Bill 372, which conveniently is so close to Senate Bill 374 that was in session last session. Okay. Uh, that was introduced on Tuesday, and it calls on state officials to issue medical marijuana cards for animals if their owner is a Nevada resident and a veterinarian certifies the animal has an illness that might be alleviated by marijuana. Sager Bloom said the provision is part of a larger, a larger omnibus bill that cleans up the state medical marijuana statute, but it doesn't really go into any more detail with that. I was hoping you would have something. Oh, Oh yes, right. oh yeah, our omnibus bill. Yeah, we read through that one. This is a this is sixty a, pages yeah, of love. Yeah, it's a it's is a it very really long sixty bill. pages of love, or is it forty pages of love with twenty pages of junk? No, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, I've, I've, I haven't point. got through the whole thing yet. I've run through the sum summaries and gone through the things that I'm interested in on it, but it covers quite a bit. It covers uh, it covers employment law. It protects our rights as patients uh, to work. It covers the DUID, the drug driving law, to where they would have to prove impairment before they nice. can even test Hallelujah. for nanograms. This is that's fantastic. So, yeah. You know, we've been talking and kind of complaining about this uh, lack of action on the on, on this behalf for a while. So I'm really, really happy and proud to hear that you know our our favorite senator has stepped up to the plate and uh, and done a solid. Yeah, so, so it's and, and it's grabbing national attention because of the the medical yeah. marijuana for pets. But you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But we'll we'll find well, out here in a couple of weeks. I it suppose. started off as a joke. People were like, "Oh, this is ridiculous." And the more internet well, comments know, I hear about it, the more serious people are about it about how they want the option oh, yeah. to do it for their animals. But th this is this is it. You know how it was couched in this warm fuzzy of get your get your pet on pot, but then you start reading into the meat of this thing. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with employment law, which is, you know, DUID. It also has to do with um, transfer, um, of ownership. transfer of ownership of, of um, MME oh, agencies. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I didn't realize Tra that. It, uh, included oh, yeah. That too. That's a big deal. Transfer well, of ownership has been really, really on the minds of these MME owners because... That's how they'll get the bill passed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, yep. Exactly. They lump a bunch of stuff together and throw it at the wall. Smart man. <laughs> See what sticks. Well, yeah. He'll, he'll it, get it for sure because people have been like, there's so much pressure to get that bill passed because of all the dead weight that's being carried by these uh, these ownership interests and these pre-existing oh, marijuana. Yeah. Don't we know these it, These MME establishments, plus, like owners promise money and that didn't come to the table with uh, cash and they cannot kick them out. And you throw you throw that little that little blurp into the bill and now all of a sudden you've got all these MME people who are trying to do their transfers of ownership, hiring lobbyists to get the bill passed. So. Yeah, and if you guys uh, want to track... If you guys want to track any of these legislative bills, go to Nellis. Uh, that is our website that tracks N -E -L -I -S. bills. N-E-L-I-S. And um, you type in N-E-L-I-S dot gov, and you should be able to pull it up on a Google search. And then you tr type in SB 372 so that you can track anything that goes on with this bill. And you can call your senator or your legislator or 
anybody so else see, in his didn't assembly. See anything in there at all that was bad? This is all. This is all good news. No, no uh, it was all pretty good. No, actually, I, I I saw stuff that was bad. What was bad in it was that the employment law says that if you're on a medication that is that is has CBDs only, mm, that the, they have to provide a place for you to medicate with your CBD only medication. But they don't say anything that if it's a mixed CBD THC medication that you have any well, type of rights within so your. How are they going to prove what's the, in my pen? So they're putting the wedge <laughs> in the door. They're putting the wedge in the door a little bit, but they haven't quite have, quite broken it wide open yet. Exactly. So what about pre-employment law? Is that protected, or is it just pre-existing employees who are protected now? Well, you know that Nevada is an at-will state, so there is there is no oh, right. protection. There's no protection mm-hmm. in any step, way, shape, or form because you they can fire you for no reason and the only reason that you're they're going to get in trouble is if they are, are discriminatory in their firing or hiring processes yes we have we have a couple people in the room that are very experienced in that they, they don't have to give you a reason in this state they just say goodbye we've all, we've all dealt with it so <laughs> unfortunately all okay. right you guys let's move on to super buds yeah that's the big <laughs> news last week you know geez What's with these guys? You know, we've been we've been telling the, you, the everyone out there for the last year that these people have been being watched, and I can't believe the reports. I mean, they were selling to unlicensed patients. They were selling. Well, that's un- because there was nobody checking them. I mean, uh-huh. there there's been no enforcement action whatsoever for the better part of eight months to a year on these delivery services. You haven't heard any news whatsoever until about a month ago when that one guy got popped with all that meth and those guns and all that crazy stuff and now this one other guy so his uh his name is christopher mcdermott he's 36 he was arrested last wednesday uh after narcotics officer serves warrants at his super buds business and his west las vegas home uh he was in court today this morning on charges of trafficking and controlled substance, possession of a controlled substance with intent to sell marijuana, possession of a controlled substance, marijuana, operating a place for sales of a controlled substance, conspiracy to violate controlled substances act, Dude. and sales of a con- sales of a controlled substances. He was also at his home. They seized. 260 pounds of marijuana edibles and 53 guns, two firearm suppressors, which are silencers, and more than $13,000 of cash. They also seized 20 pounds of marijuana, 91 grams of marijuana hash, and uh, 79 grams of THC candy. My my, the, oh, no. all I gotta say is had quite it, the stock. He yeah, had I mean, quite the stock. Fifty three guns. Fifty three guns. Um, I only well, have you only two have hands. Ten. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, well, what, you know, what are we trying to protect go, here? Well, hold on, no, no. <laughs> did it go into? Uh, like, I want to hear a couple months silencers. from now how many of the guns were family heirlooms. How many people did the oh, guns they belong to? Them. There were there they were, were like assault full, rifle style. There were mm-hmm. there were two or three fully automatics. And then there were a bunch. And, I like know, toys are, too. Yeah, but, but what are the yeah. silencers <laughs> used for? Really? Well, they're legal here in Nevada. If you get a permit for them, they're expensive. But once again, you got to you know, a bunch of paperwork and this and that. And I'm almost wondering whether the police targeted these gentlemen because of their overly aggressive nature. Like, like you said, they targeted the one guy because he had meth and guns and all that. That's an easy. That's an easy guy to put on TV and say, look at all these delivery services. This is what they are, and they're so bad. And then they pick and choose, and they go, well, this might be the second worst guy because he's got 50 guns and 100 well, pounds of weed and all I that don't know. advertising. Yeah, on one he, of the websites, he was spending 15000 a month oh, on yes. ads. Oh, sure. Yeah, and see, and that's girl. just it. That's well, just it. People are telling me, what, are they, what they just are getting these guys because they were bad. No, they're getting these guys just like they did in 2010. They're looking at that website, the and they're going. People. They're going. Oh, these guys paid fifteen thousand dollars a month for their they ad. What are they an doing? Awful lot of money. Pop. Yeah, these guys are is, second. Yeah, okay. Pop. These guys are third. You know they're going to go down the line because what they're looking for is asset seizures and forfeitures. They're, that's so what they're the looking feds, for the biggest. They're looking for mm-hmm. the biggest now, but they're, you know what? Last year, 90%, I mean, 2010, 90% of those guys on that ad, at that, on that weed maps. web weed maps got popped. 90% of them. You're the good. other day, there were 112 icons on weed maps, mm-hmm. different delivery services you could call here in the Valley. And I was actually amazed how quick the, uh, the, the Super Buds came off of weed maps it was within <laughs> hours of them reporting it on the news it was off of weed maps and that was the only thing you could find for a while <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh so, my gosh! But a, a little good news out of that, uh, Lieutenant Chavez uh, from oh, Metro says, says that we aren't targeting patients. Those are oh, his quotes. Okay, that's good news. So he said that that this man does not have a medical license. He said, and this business is whoa, totally whoa, whoa. illegal. The guy running the service didn't even have a medical card. Well, that's low hanging fruit. If there ever was low hanging mm-hmm. fruit for a prosecution, right there. You know that guy showed up <laughs> that's at one not of even our patient first to patient. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe it. People want to learn. I mean, yeah. look. He wanted to learn how <laughs> he could again, become legal, and then he probably law, ignored all of it. If you're law enforcement, you take your orders from the DA. If the DA, the DA doesn't want to prosecute cases that Nevada juries won't convict on, therefore they don't want to arrest people, you know, etc. You know, goes down the line. That's an easy, easy win. Dude didn't even have a medical card. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. No, no, not even trying. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of guns, <laughs> a man was busted with marijuana and a stolen Metro gun in Nye County this weekend. Oh. Oh, on Monday, actually, a 31-year-old man was busted with a stolen Metropolitan Police gun, according to Nye County Sheriff. Uh, It all started around 10 p.m. in Nye County. They attempted to pull this guy, Esquivel Beltran Garcia, over for uh, an issue with his taillight. He should have just pulled over. However, he took off. Dun, dun, dun. And, uh, he took off and he, the chase lasted 2.5 miles before the suspect's vehicle stopped and then they searched the car of course now because he took off they searched the car now they have p- reasonable cause to search the car they found a stolen Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department gun along with two ounces of methamphetamines and one ounce uh, of marijuana. I'd rather be the first, <laughs> I'd rather be the guy in the first story. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> they're they're going to like, okay, now we're going to oh pistol whip you with this Metro gun. <laughs> um, he was booked into the Nye County Jail. He's facing multiple charges, including possession of a controlled substances, persons prohibited to carry a firearm, possession of a stolen property firearm, and evading or eluding police officers with disregard. He was doing over 100 miles an hour he's before so, he decided to so pull dead. over. Of course, like I said, the worst of the worst, they always put, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, well, a marijuana story. Let's, you know, lop it in with these. Uh, like, another similar story right here out of Elko. Two arrested for possession of meth and marijuana. A traffic stop late Tuesday night ended in the arrest of two occupants on drug charges. An Elko police officer pulled over a vehicle because of a window tint violation. The driver of the vehicle was 22 years old and the passenger 41 years old, both of Elko. Uh, they gave consent for the vehicle to be searched. And they, found, they found a gram of mar- uh, methamphetamine, scales, and other drug paraphernalia. He found scales. You're so done. Uh, and a little bit of marijuana. And then both of the car occupants were arrested. It's just like, you know, what are these people thinking? You know, they always put the worst of the worst in front of the media to show them how bad us, us dopers are. You know what I mean? If well, you have marijuana, you're going to have, you know, meth and scales and all the bad things in life come with it. And it's just. Well, like, what else uh, is there to do in Elko besides <laughs> meth and drink? Hunt. <laughs> oh, hunt. Well, fish. they all go together. Hunt, hunt and fish, fish and yeah. meth. There you go. You I, can hunt in the dark. I got to say with this news. Like the more and more, and I read it every day, is exactly the reason we're creating this magazine to remove <laughs> that stigma of those people that you everybody mean, thinks that's what everybody looks like that has a medicinal card, and nobody looks like that. The people no. I work with every day are regular business professionals, exactly, who happen to use cannabis as a way to you know medicate. medicate. And the thing is, is that nobody be looking at you guys sideways if everybody went out after work and was drinking, and the next day everybody was bleary eyed and and, <laughs> well, and like, yeah. oh my head. I and, saw- and like yeah. an internet meme that really took me for a ride the other day and usually they're just like whatever but it said how is it uh, okay for people to show up at a child's party and get just plaster drunk and that is okay but as soon as someone fires up a joint they all look at you like you just shot somebody or something and it's just like you know i would never really given any thought to that and once again it's just the social stigma that we've all been raised to accept that we you know it's not for kids or not for the public view and things like that which is why all these public viewing ordinances are being passed in certain cities and municipalities even with recreational cannabis people are being prohibited from smoking on their own property due well to you know what justice. thank god there's edibles yeah. <laughs> Down. I'm Thank becoming one a the, believer. One of the funny ones I just uh, I like that just came out was that they did uh what if we treated alcohol uh, alcohol like we treat marijuana and oh, that video, I saw that Buzz a little two minute yeah, Buzz great. two yeah. minute clip. And as soon as she gets her alcohol card, everyone's like, "Hey, we're having a party," and they're giving her money. You think you can help us out? And then she helps him out, and she's walking down the street, and the cop comes, and he's like, "You can't 
have that much. much that's intent yeah. to sell. You're going to jail. Yeah, and she was like, she was like telling her dealer, "Hey, I want a six pack," and he gives her three beers, and she goes, this "Like is one only... of them's off brand." <laughs> she, yeah, she's like, "This is only three beers," and he's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And then they ran. Here's your six pack. And then she took it and ran. It's like two right. Coronas and a Heineken. Here's an editorial note, you guys. Join us, cannabis users fighting addiction, crime, and stupid behavior that give cannabis and hemp a bad name. So, so only That's break gross. one law at a time, please. <laughs> So um, we got one more news out of Carson before we go to break. Um, yesterday, Nevada's first medical marijuana cultivation facility was okayed up in Carson City. Woohoo! Nevada regulators Monday gave final, final licensing pr- uh, approval for the state's first medical marijuana cultivation facility north of Reno. Sierra Wellness Connection will grow medicinal pot at a facility in the North Valley's area and plans to open a dispensary this summer near downtown. Quotes, we've certainly pleased... Uh, we're certainly pleased that the state has acted judicially uh, to allow us to move forward and open our cultivation facility. Joel Crowley from Sierra Wellness, president and former University of Nevada Reno president, no said in a kidding. statement. Yep. Yep. And I think how, how jealous do you think some of the cultivators down here in the valley are that they didn't get to get to go first after all that pushing? Yep. Yeah, I know. I know. And you guys are. Um, do we have our second break coming up? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to our second break and we'll come back and talk about the elections. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at weekend702.org. Hi, welcome back, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News. I'm Jennifer, and we've got Kurt, Perry, Lawrence, and Beach with us. All right, this is the last part of our show, and we're going to talk a little bit about the elections. Or are we going to actually talk, give before away- before we go? Why don't we give away a pair of tickets to Freedom Fest to the first caller at seven zero two seven three one one two three zero. And for those of you that are just starting now, that's seven zero two seven three one twelve thirty. Okay, a pair of Freedom Fest tickets to the first caller. All right, let's talk about the elections. Early voting was from March 21st, is uh, from March 21st to April 3rd. Right now. Right now, right now. Get down to the Meadows Mall. <laughs> uh, early, early voting starts on Saturday the 17th before the election day and continues uh, every day for 14 days ending before the election day. Early voting for, April, uh, for the April 7th municipal primary election will be between March 21st and April um, April 3rd. Uh, North Las Vegas in-office voting will be on March 18th to March 19th. The site schedules hours and varies and days vary by the location. You can find out the schedule on the website or call 702-455-VOTE. 
That's 8683. Or send an email to Las Vegas Elections. There are long-term sites for voting. Um, the long-term sites are those that stay in the same area for 5 to 14 days. And they're usually in high traffic areas, such as major shopping malls, election department office, city clerk's offices, and they usually have 20 to 40 touchscreen voting machines. You guys, voting is really easy in Clark County. Every time I voted, which is, you know, in, in, in every election, it usually doesn't take more than about 15, 20 minutes. Five <laughs> minutes. It's it, on, on a good day, five if minutes. You go early. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And if you don't vote, you can't complain. That's right. Exactly. So get out and vote early and vote often. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, some news out of Alaska. The Anchorage police uh, raided Alaska Cannabis Club. We've been talking about Charlo Green for Charlo. quite. That's that uh, quite a that while. Lady who that nice it. newscaster lady who quit on on TV? Yeah. She said, "Yeah, f it, I quit." Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she they raided her. Um, their uh, Alaska Cannabis Club on March 20th, 2015. And she said that she is um, basically going to sue the crap out of the city. She said, S. No, no, this all sounds familiar. It sounds exactly like what happened in 2010 here in Las Vegas. You know, oh, I'm going to open my doors back again tomorrow and I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Well, you know, realistically, what ends up happening is, you know, we've all seen what happened when the proud take on the man all by themselves they end up going down there are no parades and that's just the yeah end of the i story. fought the law mm -hmm. and the law won well, usually you know miss green hasn't really done very uh she should write that book how to make friends and influence people because <laughs> she's done a pretty bad job of it all she's done is make enemies up there by her her uh, her antics and regardless of whether what she's doing might be morally right uh she is rubbing her nose in the face of the people who were trying to do this correctly there are certain uh, coalitions of people up in Alaska who are trying to do this right and work with legislative representatives and regulators like we like we can't did here in Nevada in order to be the change that we want to see rather than just saying F it online yeah. or on television <laughs> and trying to just push your agenda because of your social profile. That's not mm -hmm. how it goes. And, you know, I... I, I uh, I well, commend her for her pioneering spirit, but unfortunately, pioneers get killed and settlers get the land. So, Well, and there's a difference between an activist and uh, an advocate. An advocate goes within the law to change the laws and tries to shape social behavior within those laws and then change those laws, uh, you know, in, in a manner. An activist, uh, you know, basically kind of is bucking, tries to buck the system, um, you know. Well, if the system's been bucked, the law has been passed. Just wait for the regulations to mm -hmm. come out. If you want to be a part of the regulatory process, be a part of it. Don't just... Well, she's taken herself out actively by doing this. Oh, absolutely. And, and, with, and with her position that she had, that she left, she could have really made some change if she done did it the right way. All she would have had to do is open the... Hold the little symposium and say, I'm taking investors. We're opening a cannabis, mm -hmm. you know, dispensary or whatever and blah, blah, blah. And I think she would have done just fine but that's not what she did so you know here we are and we will be following the story as it develops you you will better believe we'll be having more about this probably in a month or two i would guess mm -hmm. yeah and do you have some more news out of alaska i got the second page of a story oh about okay alaska. is There's that is a, that uh, well, here, here i got something here uh, lawmakers are working on a marijuana board bill and the state is seeking members uh -oh. basically what this means is the state is trying to solicit uh, resumes for potential members for a new marijuana regulatory board. Although, unfortunately, the lawmakers are still kind of trying to work on legislation to create such a board. It's uh, kind of hokey. Like they're create they're taking the applications before they create the rules on how to pick the applicants. Oh my! But you know, it's just one of those things. They want to get a jump on it. Um, you're getting the cart before the horse. Well, there. No. it's almost better than what we did because you know, in 2013 we decided that we didn't want to create a new agency to save the state some money and this and that. And uh, that hasn't really worked out too well, handing it over to the uh, pre-existing uh, State Department, Department that got tasked services, with it. Yeah, yeah that, well, they just kind of got it dumped in their lap. Nobody wanted it, and that's just kind of what happened. So they've kind of decided to do it themselves, go forward with it. And really, I think those are really cool jobs. I, I, I think one of my dream jobs would be a Nevada Cannabis Control Commissioner job. I think that would be <laughs> a really, really cool job. Uh, you I do well. No interest in the and you know, I don't want any ownership or something. I just think that would be a really, really cool, like honest uh, job to have. You know, and I think that the people who are selected to that hopefully will take the job as seriously as it demands. So we'll see. I got a I got a little story out of Connecticut. 
All right, let's hear it. A Connecticut lawyer drops a two-ounce bag of weed in court by accident. Dude. Can I no, ask you, br- how do you yeah, drop yeah. two ounces? It, Please, well, here it goes. Continue. Everybody smokes weed, lawyers, doctors, chefs, and yes, even cops. Case in point, a lawyer in New London, Connecticut, let a two-ounce sack of marijuana slip from his pocket onto the floor while in court. The best part, the lawyer, 46-year-old Vincent J. Fazone, was in court representing a client Claims the weed wasn't even his. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> I was just holding it for someone in my desk. Two ounces of crap. That's Did so slip. much. Yep. The embarrassed and upset lawyer instead claims the weed belonged to a client, but the story reeks of fiction. Oh, you scumbag. You're going to throw your client <laughs> under the bus right away? <laughs> Fazone de- declined to comment uh, Tuesday evening, but a paralegal from his office said the marijuana belonged to the son of one of his clients. Holly McGregor said Fazone met with a client before co- court Tuesday, and the client was upset about her son's use of marijuana. McGregor and Fazone took the marijuana and told the woman he'd return it later in the day after her son returned from school to talk to him. <laughs> Oh, my God. And how do you let a two-ounce bag <laughs> slip? If anybody knows how big a two-ounce bag is, that's about a well, bag like, of Lay's well, potato like chips, have, like a big one. Wouldn't that just stink up your briefcase? Like, wh- you would why, think. Why would you bring... Oh, it was in his back pocket? Two ounces in his You gotta be back, kidding me. That had to be brickweed. <laughs> what a more well, What state was this in, Frank? Connecticut. Connecticut. What an idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. All right. I got some news out of Connecticut. Connecticut. Thousands of people busted in Connecticut for marijuana possession now have the right to get their conviction erased <laughs> after the state Supreme Court ruled Monday that the violation had been downgraded to yep. the same level as a parking ticket. Wonderful news. So what it's about all retroactive. two in court? <laughs> <laughs> all retroactive then. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a topic multiple states are going to have to be facing, said uh, Aaron Romano, that's Medinto's uh, attorney. Because marijuana has been decriminalized across the United States, this issue needs to be addressed. And so Connecticut is, is being proactive in addressing this issue. Well, you know, this raises kind of a, a constitutional issue with me a little bit. Sure. play devil's advocate, and I really... I really, really enjoy that people are trying to take that take that leap and say we should retroactively expunge people's records for marijuana crime. But if we create new crimes in the future, does that mean we can go back proactively or retroactively charge people for crimes that we'll create in the future? Does that set that same case precedent? And that's kind of a scary thing to think about. I hope it doesn't. But it's just like, you know, once again, that's just a devil's advocate thing. Hopefully this is stays this stays pure and we can continue to, you know, get people's lives back that deserve it. And it doesn't become something more than it is. Well, what I always thought was a really big travesty is that, uh, you know, Eddie Lepp out of Northern California. Yeah, the gentleman who's doing a life in prison at the Supermax. Yeah, he is weed. doing life in prison in a Supermax prison in Colorado. Florence, right? Yeah, in Florence, that, that's Colorado. That's like where they put the terrorists. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So they they put him in jail in a state that is has legalized cannabis. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that's, that. That's Eddie Lepp is doing life in prison for cannabis in a recreationally legal cannabis state. That's crazy. That's, mm-hmm. that, that's a travesty to me. This guy shouldn't have been in prison in the first place, but to be in a supermax prison like, I, in I know a place, everyone's done something for Eddie Lepp, but maybe we should do something for Eddie at some point. I think mm-hmm. that maybe we should do something for Eddie Lepp, well, for sure. Well, I mean, it, it's been a great show, but we are, we we are, are almost out of time. time. So we got to yeah, get to our announcements. Kurt, go for it. So uh, we have our executive uh, volunteer meeting this Thursday from 6.30 to 8.30 at our WeCan offices. If you want to come in and learn how to be a volunteer or learn how to work with WeCan, come on down. Uh, we also have our patient support group in Pahrump this Saturday on March 28th from 2 to two to 4 p.m. on uh, 1440 East Highway 372 in Pahrump. Uh, we have our Cannabis Cuisine Cooking Course this Sunday, March 29th at 2 p.m. Our pay, uh, first Friday on April 3rd. And same time, same place as every first time, Friday. Yep. We have yep. a Growing Nevada class this Saturday, April 4th, uh, 4 p.m. That's $25 to anyone who wants to enter. And spots are going fast. And, of course, the big one, our 420 Las Vegas Freedom Festival that we're hosting with LV Normal Sunday, April 19th, 2015, from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Las Vegas Country Saloon on Fremont Street and Las Vegas Boulevard. All right. Do not miss it. As always, if you want to get a hold of us, we are at WeCan702.org or we are on Facebook at WeCan702, and you'll be able to find us. On Meetup, we're at meetup.com forward slash weekend702, and that, that's where you'll get notice of all our parties and events into your email. 
Also, if you love this radio show, check us out on GoFundMe forward slash WeCan702. We're looking for some help to keep it going. Thank you again. See you next week. All right.